And so I began the project with thinking about how and why I use a desk. And I'm the sort of person who likes to have lots of things out. Papers with different sketches and ideas on, notebooks with even more sketches, and books and objects to reference off of. But I'm also the type of person who likes objects to have homes, so I can tidy and organise when the mess becomes too much. And so you might say to yourself, there's already an answer. It's right underneath you, in fact. It's called a drawer. And whilst they work, I find them extremely hard and awkward to get into, and places where things go to die, as opposed to being easily graspable to look and work on. And so my idea seeks to integrate both these work and storage spaces through the addition of a fabric sling, allowing users to easily swap between the two environments and stay both organised and inspired at the same time. And so I started out making the project with a sheet of acclaimed Baltic birch plywood, using my circular saw to cut it to length. and the table saw to its final width. And I've chosen plywood for the top because I needed a material that was extremely flat and had a lot of lateral strength. And this is because the front edge is not going to be supported in the finished piece. And so once it was cut down to size, I next needed to make the cutout that the fabric could hang through. To do this, I converted my circular saw into a plunge saw by loosening off the depth stop, making two parallel lines along the depth of the depth. I could then use a jigsaw to connect these lines and free the cutout, before using a router with a flush trim bit to reference the jig I had made to machine it to its final finished dimension and shape. To remove the sharp edges of this slot, clean up any grain tear out, and also create a groove that stationery could be placed in. I then put a 45 degree chamfer bit in the router, going around the edges perimeter. The final step for the desktop was then to drill four holes one in each corner that the legs would fit through and I've decided to make the legs come up through the tabletop because I thought this would allow the underframe to sort of be locked in place prohibiting it from either twisting or racking so that's how the legs will meet the top so now to work out how the fabric will and instead of simply screwing it into the cutout which would create particular points of tension where the fabric will be likely to stretch and eventually tear. I decided to make two long strips that would secure it into place. And since I was going to the effort of making these, I thought it would be nice if I could get them to do a little bit more. And so I cut one edge at an angle, and this, when coupled with the edge of chamfer, was going to allow a pencil to be rested or a book to be rent in place. And to make the sling itself, I'm using a piece of canvas, as it's a cheap, strong, and widely available material that is resistant to stretching. And to stop the two exposed edges from fraying, I'm first running them through an overlocker, which stitches a loop around the edge. Before folding this part over and sewing a single line stitch it back on itself. And so you can see here how the fabric wraps over the strip and then is secured to the top itself.
and with that desktop is finished and so we can move over to the supporting framework and I'm making all of this out of solid ash and because the boards are rough sawn I'm first going to run them through the thicknesser so it can be one smooth face to reference off of I can then put this face up against the table saw fence to resaw the board to thickness, making sure to do this in small increments so as to not overload the saw blade. And once resawn, I then have to run this face back through the thicknesser to flatten it and remove any saw marks before cutting to a final finished width. To make the stocks for the legs, I follow a similar process, using the table saw to machine the ash to its required width and height. However this time, because I want the legs to be cylindrical, I mark a circle on each end that the table saw can reference. First removing the bulk of the weight with the blade set to 45 degrees, before refining it further at 22 and a half. And that gets me 90% of the way there, but to make it into a perfect cylinder, I knocked up a simple jig. The original intention was for this to house a router, but on my first attempt I realised it was far too aggressive, and so I ended up simply using the random orbit sander, starting off at a low grip and working my way up. To attach these two types of components together, I wanted a strong joint with lots of surface area, and so I decided to use the mortise antenna. However, the difficulty with cylinders is that there's no flat face to reference off of, and so I used the circle markings we drew earlier to draw four lines and on the length of the leg that I could reference when removing the bulk of the mortise material by drilling holes over at the pillager. Before cleaning these holes up with a variety of different sized chisels. The stretchers could then be glued to the legs and because I wanted the entire piece to flat pack for transportation I decided to do this in three separate assemblies. Two side pieces and one for the back. And they ultimately attached together by drilling and then tapping two holes that an M6 bolt can be threaded through. To secure the understructure to the tabletop, I'm going to be using the same bolt however this time fixed into inset nuts. So after marking the various locations, I drills holes in the tabletop that the inset nuts could be tightened into and drilled correspondingly located holes in the stretchers. So a bolt could be pushed through. But now everything is finally secured together, ironically, it has to be completely taken apart for finishing. So I started off by sending all the faces up to 180 grit.
and then applying two to three coats of varnish to all the plywood surfaces and two coats of wax to the ash making sure to denib with 400 grit sandpaper in between coats and so there we have it the result is a desk with plenty of space to work but where that work can easily be cleared away where well, the information you're referencing is always on hand and easy to access and where the cutout which would normally only provide an avenue for a plug or cord also provides a space to quickly rest your favourite pen or pencil store bigger pieces of stationery or to display a special book or painting what we've got is not just a flat surface for work but hopefully a space and a system that can encourage creativity. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, there should be two on your screen shortly. If you want to see other people's desk entries, there should be a playlist link on your screen somewhere too. And if you want to support me or the channel, I've just started selling some of the things I make, and so there'll be a link to that in the description below. So again, thank you and good luck to everyone else that entered.